for Mount Royal. Merci, Monsieur le Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll be sharing my time with my honorable colleague from Saint Leonard, Saint Michel, who is definitely the best dressed member in this chamber. Uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, given that this is the first time I have risen today, I just want to, for one second, express my incredible condolences to the victims and their families and their friends of the horrible murder, uh, terrorist act, hate crime that occurred in Orlando. I think we were all very, very touched by what happened and, and, and very disconcerted. And it's almost hard for many of us today to concentrate on this motion when you think of the crimes that ISIS is perpetuating, and now we're talking about marijuana. So let me, let, me be, let me be blunt, Mr. Speaker. I was not one of the cool kids in high school. I never tried marijuana. Oh. And, uh, and to be honest, Mr. Speaker, I'm glad that I didn't. It's not my style to smoke, to drink, or to, or to use drugs. But I also understand that it's not my right to impose my own views and my own values on all Canadians. And I respect and accept the fact that our party has proposed making marijuana use legal. And as part of that, we also said that we were going to regulate and we were going to restrict. While I appreciate the motion put forward by my honorable friend and colleague from Victoria, and, and, I, and I highly value his intellect and I, I love working with him, I disagree with the perspective that we're going to simply, simply decriminalize without looking at the other two very important facts, regulating and restricting. This motion makes no distinction between 14-year-olds and 40-year-olds. It doesn't say that decriminalization is going to occur only for adults. It's saying decriminalization is going to occur for everyone. And one of the things that is incredibly important to me, Mr. Speaker, is keeping marijuana out of the hands of children. Marijuana use is not without its effects. As we all know, it can make you slightly loopy for a certain period of time. But there are also ties to breathing disorders, mental health issues, and particularly for young people whose brains are still developing, marijuana is a dangerous substance. It is not something we want to be widely distributed to our children. But if we are going to decriminalize without dealing with how marijuana is distributed, without dealing with how we're going to keep it out of the hands of kids, we're going to enter into problems that are not anticipated by this motion. I do understand where you have a competent adult who's looking at a government that says, hey, we're going to make this legal. Well, you have a certain sympathy for why they're going to be prosecuted and going to get a criminal record. But at the same point in time, Mr. Speaker, in my view, the law is the law is the law. Whether we agree with the law or don't agree with the law, whether we believe that a law is going to be rescinded or not, it doesn't mean we don't have a duty, Mr. Speaker, to respect the law as it is. As such, my sympathy for the people that we've been talking about today is slightly muted because they should be, just like the rest of us, respecting the law. That is what we're supposed to do until such time as the law is changed. The NDP has raised C-14. I also want to raise C-14 because one of the things this government was criticized for was the quick process that led to C-14. But in the case of C-14, Mr. Speaker, there was a very good reason. There was a Supreme Court deadline of June the 6th. In the case of marijuana, there is no deadline. The case studies and the commentary that we've had from the states in the United States that have legalized marijuana use, in particular Colorado, amongst others, has been that you should be taking the correct time frame to put in place the right measures to go along with legalization. You should not be rushing this. Not only do you need to have the regulatory rules in place, but you need to have the infrastructure in place. You need to have those people who are ready to legally distribute marijuana. You need to have the police forces and judiciary prepared for the way we're going to treat this. You need to have the educational resources available for how we're going to go into the schools and explain to our young people why they should not be using marijuana and try to disincentivize them from doing so. One of the things that is also troubling to me, Mr. Speaker, on the idea of just accepting this motion is the question of regulation of the product itself. 
We've heard from many Canadians, including the Honourable Député d'Outre, including the Honourable Member for Outremont in 2012. In fact, that there was marijuana in this country that was very hard marijuana that was dangerous for health. If we're going to legalize marijuana or even decriminalize it, we need to have standards in place to talk about how it's grown, how to prevent contaminants from getting into marijuana, making sure that the marijuana used is safe to consume to the extent possible. We need to talk about packaging. We need to talk about distribution. How do we get this out of the hands of organized crime? My fear, Mr. Speaker, is if this motion is adopted as is, who will everyone buy from? The producers of medical marijuana are not authorized to sell it to those without a prescription. There's nothing in the motion to talk about how the distribution channels would work. As such, my concern is those people who are currently illegally distributing marijuana across Canada, basically organized crime, are going to have freer license to go into our schools and to talk to our young people about how it's not criminal to possess these small amounts. Why don't you buy from me? And once that happens, Mr. Speaker, what other drugs are these people selling in this organized crime? How will this stop then someone who starts with marijuana moving toward harder drugs that are also sold by the same distributor, if we're going to call the mafia that, as are distributing marijuana? So for me, Mr. Speaker, this is of enormous concern because right now in Canada, we had the highest rate of 29 countries of minors that are using marijuana. So whatever we do, Mr. Speaker, in terms of the legalization process, an important part has to be how we're going to keep it out of the hands of our young people. And as a mayor, Mr. Speaker, and I've heard again the argument, and I respect that argument, about making police forces more, taking, taking them away from the marijuana, definitely, and I agree with this. The possess going after possessors of small amounts of marijuana for who are adults, it takes police away from more important things they could be doing. This I completely agree with. But what I don't agree with is decriminalization then has that same effect. Because decriminalization still means these people should be ticketed. It still means you're going to have prosecutions. It still means the officers are going to be going to court. So for me, Mr. Speaker, the answer is not decriminalization. It's legalization, but legalization with strict enforcement mechanisms and with proper surveillance and supervision. And I am very happy, Mr. Speaker, that we have an expert in this government in the area of marijuana use, in the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice, who is going to be leading us in this effort with his incredible former experience as a police chief of who is going to be leading us in this, in this effort with his incredible experience as the former police chief of Toronto. And let me underline, Mr. Speaker, when I talked about his experience, I was not talking about him as a consumer. <laughs> but rather, rather as a Canadian expert in this field who will help us on the path to legalization, but restriction and regulation along with it. And he's going to be working along with a team of experts in many different fields. So, Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I respect and understand my honourable member for Victoria's point, and hopefully in a little while adults who have small possession will find it to be legal and will not be prosecuted, but I don't believe we should be rushing forward on a path until we know exactly what the rules are, exactly how to keep marijuana out of the hands of kids, and how we're going to regulate the product. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Que ce commentaire? The Honourable Member for Hochelaga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If we were to decriminalize straight away, there would still be arrests, but far fewer pointless arrests, far fewer costly prosecutions. Why not use a good part of that $4 million a year to fight organized crime instead? and to fight drug addiction. The Honourable Member for Mont Royal. I'd like to thank my Honourable colleague for her good question. In my opinion, well, I recognize that the police should be used for the most important things. That's true. I agree. Decriminalization will perhaps 
divert certain resources to better purposes. But the fact is, we're just talking about a few million dollars. That's not the same as uh, entering into a system with no regulation, no way of keeping marijuana out of the hands of young people. It's not very well planned. In my opinion, we have to plan this properly. We have the opportunity to do better uh, than this, and I think that's how we should proceed. The Honourable Member for Caribou, Prince George. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and, uh, and I appreciate our Honourable Colleague from Mount Royal's uh, uh, presentation. I almost felt that I had to come to the, uh, the defence of our Honourable Colleague from Scarborough Southwest, but he corrected himself, and uh, uh, because I, I know that the, uh, our colleague from Scarborough Southwest is a, a long-time police chief and distinguished career, and I appreciate uh, his, uh, his influence on this House, and I know that he's got... Uh, a great, a great ability and, a, a, and an a incredible amount of uh, experience in policing, maybe not in uh, marijuana use, but uh, maybe policing uh, marijuana use. But uh, to my honourable colleague from Mount Royal, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to ask him, is he aware that the Canadian Association of Police Chiefs uh, has come out against the legalization of marijuana? Member for Mount Royal. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I always appreciate the good humour of my honourable colleague, so I want to thank him for his question. From my entire history as a mayor and a city councillor, which lasted for 20 years, I dealt very frequently with the police on issues related to marijuana. And what I was constantly faced with was a situation where the police agreed that the current mechanisms that we use to stop people from possession of small amounts of marijuana and the defocus from what really should be their primary uh, attention in terms of important crimes, there was, they recognized that there was a problem here. They asked parliamentarians to act. And I do believe, Mr. Speaker, that recognizing that we should decriminalize this along with strong regulation and prevention is the right step forward. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my Honourable Colleague from Mount Royal for his presentation today and his speech. I'm struck by one thing. The motion before us today has an incredibly strong rationale, which is that people should not have criminal records for the possession of a substance that the government in power has run a campaign to say we will legalize. The Green Party wants to legalize. We understand that the, the prohibition on cannabis serves one major beneficiary and purpose, and that's organized crime. I would like to ask the Honourable Member, and I didn't get a chance to put it to the Minister of Justice earlier, although I, I, I was trying to get a question in, but wouldn't it make sense for the Liberal government to commit early that the criminal records of people who were uh, carrying a criminal record for possession, not for participating in organized crime, but for simple possession of cannabis, whenever that crime occurred, would have their records expunged once there's a legal framework in place for legalization of cannabis? Honourable Member for Mount Royal. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank my colleague for, from San H. Gulf Islands for that very, very intelligent question. Um, two things. One, I, I repeat what I said during my speech. I do believe that when something is illegal, regardless of a government's intention to make it legal, and we all see what's happening in the Senate with medically assisted dying, who knows, despite the House of Commons' willingness to make something legal, how the Senate is now going to react. Um, I, I don't want to prematurely state that something is going to change and people should act in accordance with the law during the period that the law is in force. That being said, I certainly understand what the Honourable Member said and I would certainly be willing to further discuss that point with her if and when marijuana use does become legal for adults. Resuming debate, 